Good morning, everyone. It's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you have a great morning this morning. It is Friday morning. As always, a coffee kind of morning. Cheers, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Finally back at you again. Um, but I should be back uh, a few uh, more days this time. I'm on a couple of weeks holidays, so i got tons of time to do videos. I may not do one every day because I'm still on holidays, but uh, I'll definitely do uh, quite a bit more than just once every couple of days <laughs> until I get back to work and then it's back to normal. But uh, it gives me a chance to catch up, um, catch up with you guys for sure, catch up on watching my videos, uh, all the all the people that I follow and everything else. Um, yeah, it's uh, time, 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 time. But I'm here again to continue my look at Queen I love this band. I really do. I think they're amazing. Uh, this is their seventh studio album in jazz. Okay. There's the boys there. It's a great... This is a great version of this album, except some... I hate... Why people had to write on their album covers. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, 1978 released, uh, number two in the UK charts, uh, number six in the US. Um, didn't rank as strong as, as their previous albums, but uh, still remarkable, remarkable album. I think I love about Queen, and this came just came to mind this morning, but I think I've always felt this way, uh, that all four members contributed to their songs. It wasn't just one guy writing a track. Uh, one guy writing the music. It, everyone was involved. Everyone played instruments, multi-instrumentalists, for sure. Um, and also the fact that they never changed their lineup until, unfortunately, Freddie's passing. But uh, their lineup remained the same, which uh, definitely um, made them consistent as a band. Uh, they were true friends, friends till the end. And um, amazing. I'm sure they didn't. They had some times, for sure. Uh, but uh, for the most part, they were pretty darn consistent. Um, sorry for the noise, as these types of sleeves always make too much noise. But they make them the album pop. <laughs> so this is the cover here. Okay, look at the recording studio in there. Remarkable. Uh, if I recall, this one had a poster, uh, which I don't have. Um, would have been inappropriate to show it on YouTube anyway. Uh, it's on the um, we. This is on the Wii label, and uh, yeah, thirteen tracks, so a fairly long album. Uh, and of course, as usual, I changed my rankings. This is already about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I had everything listed, I thought, and then I changed it again. So, um, starting up at number 13, uh, Mustafa, written by Freddie. Uh, contains English, Arabic, and per uh, Persian um, words. And I think some some made up words as well. Uh, it's a lead off track, uh, very Middle Eastern sounding. Um, still a rocking track, but not my favorite. Not because they're singing different uh, words using different languages. Um, it just not my favorite. That's why it's ranked at number thirteen. But uh, decent track, decent track. Apparently, they use that in their concerts to um, sing uh, uh, different versions of Bohemian Rhapsody. They throw some of Mustafa's in there, apparently. But um, that's kind of cool. At number uh, 12, and I had these reversed, but I switched it. Uh, Fun It, uh, kind of a disco vibe, because um, it is uh, the cusp of the 80s coming up. Uh, by Roger Taylor, sung by Roger as well. Nice funky track. 
Taylor's vocals are, are top notch on this one. Love the guitar work by Brian May. Uh, the drumming is a little flat though, kind of electric sounding drumming on this one. Uh, if it was true drumming, I think it'd be a better track, but uh, a decent track still. Fun it. Uh, at number 11, Dreamer's Ball by Brian May. The tribute to Elvis Presley, sung by Freddie. Normally when Brian, well, not always when Brian May writes a track, he sings it, but uh, dual guitar work in there by Brian as well. Very 40s and 50s sounding track. Nice lazy sounding track as well. So decent track. So those are my uh, lower three. At number 10, Only in Seven Days, it's a John Deacon track. John Deacon nah, contributes a couple of tracks on this album. Uh, he also plays guitar on this one as well. Nice piano intro. Uh, awesome solos. Uh, the only way Brian May can, can um, play these solos. Um, it's a lighthearted track as well. Uh, but uh, not a bad track at all. Number 10. Uh, and I switched the next two up. Um, at number nine, Leave It Home Made Easy. It's a Brian May ballad, sung by Brian May this time. Um, and a uh, nice acoustic track. Great harmonies by the band, as always, as usual. Queen, uh, I think, is some of the best harmonies out there, for sure. But uh, Leave It Home Made Easy, number nine. At number eight, more of that, more uh, of that jazz. It's a Roger Taylor track, who also plays mostly the instruments on this one. Uh, real drumming on this one as well. Uh, I like the rhythm of the song. Uh, Roger's vocals are, are great with that grit. Yet he does the falsetto as well. Um, and uh, um, there's also um, some great moments with Freddie's vocals in there as well. Um, and uh, they kind of mix three or four songs in, in, in this one. Uh, not complete songs, just they mentioned um, Bicycle Girls and, and a couple other tracks on this one as well. So number eight, more of that jazz. And again, I switched those up a little bit. As the next three, I, I switched up as well. Uh, so at number seven, Jealousy, written by Freddie with Brian May playing an acoustic guitar. Dramatic track, great piano led, uh, nice love song, expertly sung by Freddie. Of course, he had probably one of the best vocals out there, for sure. Uh, at number six, If You Can't Beat Them, Join Them, another John Deacon track. Um, and uh, this is, uh, um, this is a, a heavier track, for sure. Um, and uh, um, great lead work on this one uh, awesome solos by brian just really good and uh number five another john deacon track dead on time who plays acoustic and electric guitar on this one as well uh rock and track by by john deacon his normally his tracks aren't this rocking but this one's pretty heavy uh guitar work is some of the best i've heard by brian may fast track as well very heavy metal sounding uh, I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. Um, but I would have ranked it higher, but there's more to come. Uh, but it's definitely in the top five. Definitely in the top five. Dead on time. At number four, Let Me Entertain You. So the type track would, would think it'd be kind of a lighthearted track. No, it's a it's a rockin' tune. Uh, great guitar intro. In Your Face. Great harmonies as, as usual. Uh, drumming is top notch on this one as well. And the solos are just burning in your face. It's just a great, great track. Let me entertain you. Number four. Uh, and number three, Bicycle Race. Classic track by Freddie. Uh, about riding a bike. <laughs> Who writes a song about riding a bike? But this one works. Um, heavy at times. Um, classic Queen vocals. Um, overplayed, unfortunately, as most of their hits are. Um, but nice change in the middle with some bicycle bells going on and then it rocks out again which leads into number two bicycle race i almost switched number one and number two up but i think i think i've got it right maybe but this is my thing you you can have your own uh, opinions on this one but i got number two at fat bottom girls by brian may sung by brian and freddie 
Uh, they kind of drop down to a drop D tuning, which is different. I'm not 100% on that one, but they don't normally drop their tuning down. But I love this track. Sorry for that notice. Uh, the choruses are, are the are the the best rocking track as as well. Great drumming, um, and it rocks out at the end for sure. So, bice, uh, sorry, flat fat bottom girls. So number four, let me in, let me entertain you. Uh, number three, bicycle race. Number two, fat bottom girls. And at number one, don't stop me now. Uh, Freddy track. It's also it was also used in the soundtrack for Shaun of the Dead. Um, this is a great, great track. Starts off um, thinking it's going to be a ballad, and then it turns into this rhythmic, uh, rhythmic track. Uh, awesome um, guitar, classic solos by Brian, um, and um, it's just so upbeat and and so good, and the vocals are top notch, and and it's just a fantastic, fantastic track. And then it ends with that same ballad sounding as it starts. So just an all around, it's kind of brings you up, not doesn't already bring you down. It's just kind of gives you a break at the end, but nice, nice track. Don't stop me now. So at number 13, Mustafa. At number 12, Fun It. At um, number... <laughs> Uh, where's number 11 here? Sorry, uh, Dreamer's Ball, number 11. At number 10, Only in Seven Days. At number 9, Leaving Home Ain't Easy. At number 8, More of That Jazz. At number 7, Jealousy. Uh, at number 6, If You Can't Beat Them, Join Them. Uh, or so If You Can't Beat Them. Uh, at number 5, Dead on Time. At number 4, Let Me Entertain You. At number three, Bicycle Race. At number two, Fat Bottom Girls. And uh, at number one, Don't Stop Me Now. Um, I ranked this one a four out of five. Another great, great album uh, by Queen. And uh, I'm going to continue on. I don't have all of their studio albums or later stuff, but I still have a fair chunk to go through. So uh, I'll try and do my best on this one. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Love you all. Glad to be back, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.